Folks, it's official. Not only is the Wickerbottom refresh out now in beta form, our granny librarian is back to being the true goddess of the constants. With 11 new books alongside some major perk tweaks, the rework is definitely simple on paper. However, it's anything but once the pages start turning. So shh, it's reading time. Or... Is it? For you see, only four of those 11 novelty novels are available right from the start, and the others won't exactly be unlocking in ways that we're used to. Not when the new bookcase is involved, that is. Costing boards, gold, papyrus, and a feather pencil, the bookcase will grant us access to the remaining books, as you can see. However, the OG books will still be locked behind their respective crafting station's mind. But here's the thing about this thing. This bookcase is far more than a crafting station. It's a storage unit for up to 20 books, as well as a recharging station. As far as I can tell, all books placed within a bookcase will regenerate 1% of their durability every 30 seconds for as long as they remain stored, making every book a major commodity now. Especially when a lot of the new crafts today are going to be ones that we won't want to make over and over and over again. They're kind of expensive. That said, there are some that are incredibly cheap for what they actually do, like the Lunar Grimoire here. And what does the Lunar Grimoire do for us, you ask? Oh, you know, it will just casually force any knight to be a full flippin' moon per each of its three reads, meaning glomer farms potentially, easy moon glass mining on the Lunar Island, consistent were pig farms without the weight, and plenty more. Including the bad, mind you. Oh, you poor Woody players. You just can't seem to catch a break. But believe it or not, everyone, that is just the beginning of our newfound power. Let us take apiculture notes for a spin, shall we? Costing papyrus, bee stingers, and honey, the book offers us three uses per craft and will once more just casually spawn three loyal grumble bees that will both follow and fight for us. And the kicker here is that there doesn't appear to be a limit Limit to just how many we can have at one time either, so you absolutely know what's coming. We are soon going to try to kill Bee Queen with her own minions. I'll see you then. But how about some more utility mechanics, Beard? Did she get anything beyond crop growing? Oh yes. Take for example her practical rain rituals here. Costing an umbrella and a watering can, each of its four uses in total can either start or stop both rain or snow. Now, I'm not entirely sure why we would care about the latter, but before we move on, I will say that yes, books still drain her sanity at varying amounts depending on what kind of book it is. I just haven't cared enough to actually check how much exactly each is doing because they're kind of just too darn cool. And that reminds me. How about a book to actually control just how cool we can get? Well, perhaps not the temperature of the world, but again, our individual temperatures are gonna be fluctuating with these things. Fork over a simple thermal stone, and you will have three chances to both raise your temperature to 35 degrees instantly, or lower it to 35 instead. No higher or lower. Simple, easy, and kind of awesome, honestly. So use them well. But if any book is going to get lots of use, especially by those who don't want to go sailing to catch ocean fish, it will be the Angler's Survival Guide here. Costing a sea fishing rod and two basic bobbers, the Angler's Survival Guide looks to spawn three random schools of ocean fish all around the reader. And as a bonus, it appears large fish can spawn in shallow waters and vice versa if you know what I mean. Plus, what's more, there doesn't actually appear to be a limit, so just bloody have at it. Fish for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Just be sure to have something to actually cook them all with, yeah? And heck, maybe even the pyrokinetics explained could help with that. Costing an end is nigh, which is intriguing. This novel will instantly put out all nearby fires and smoldering objects, sort of like a luxury fan would. Not only that, though, doing so apparently grants us something called a fiery pen that appears to be a weapon of some sorts. A weapon that, at least for the time being, can be quote-unquote refueled by snuffing out additional fires to actually increase the amount of charges that the thing has. This said, this might be a bug. 
But what does the pen do exactly for the time being? Well, in my limited experience, it appears to be a slightly better fire staff in that it will deal roughly 5 points of direct damage per shot while also igniting whatever it hits for then additional fire damage over time. They're not bad really. I'll have to play with it more though. To continue though, the Everything Encyclopedia is going to make early game playing a heck of a lot easier after today, folks. In short, it is a dirt cheap book, and reading one unlocks every recipe immediately, and this is great because this is available immediately. You won't get any tier 2 magic, ancient, and or sea fishing crafts that is, but just think of it as an alchemy engine in the palm of your hand. It's pretty freaking good stuff. All this said though, there might be something else to it, so if you found something, let us know. But no, seriously, that was also likely the end of all the good books. Now come some that are still interesting, yes, but kind of questionable, like the overcoming arachnophobia here. It costs tons of silk and glands just for the ability to create unique chunks of sticky webbing simply to slow down mobs. Yeah, no. I think this needs to also de-aggro hordes of spiders or lower their sanity auras in order to be worth it in my opinion. And heck, make it all three for all I care. Next up, both the Lux Eterna and Lux Eterna Redux. The former costs a light bulb and firefly and offers us three uses of which each use will generate a light beam above us for half a day. The latter costs a Lux Eterna itself, and not only offers 5 uses this time around, but seems to generate an even bigger light beam atop our noggins. Both are fine, but both are definitely not needed at all. Light is no issue in this game, and we have got far better options to light areas than these. And finally, Horticulture Expanded. Costing a Horticulture Abridged, it appears that we can expect up to 14 random crops or food sources to instantly grow nearby the reader, up from 10 with Horticulture Abridged. Other than that, however, we still cannot seem to get giant crops via this book, but Expanded does seem to grow them with reduced stress versus abridged, so at least we are going to get some more crop seeds this way. That's all unconfirmed though, so please correct me if I'm wrong. But to wrap up our day, two specific character tweaks. Wickerbottom's health has been lowered to 125 overall, and she can no longer be forced to sleep via Berger's yawning, gestalts, moonshrooms, pamphlets, mandrakes, you name it. She will still get groggy mind, but she will never fall to the ground in agony ever again. So make notes. Oh, and also note that this update is more than just a wicker bottom rework as well. Wartox, Winona, and Walter have all received some tweaks here and there, alongside a couple gameplay changes on top of it all. So read more in the official post right here. And there you have it everyone, the Wicker Bottom Refresh Beta and all of its novelty. Now things are still pretty darn fresh, so I can't really put down my judgement quite yet, however I am a bit sad that the rework was just an excuse to add more books at the end of the day. When I made my Wicker Bottom speculation video, I was saying that she's gonna get more books, I just didn't think she was gonna be all books if you know what I mean. Perhaps our librarian could have benefited from a bit more creativity here and there. But thanks for watching, folks. Well, wish to all, renew your library cards, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.